Welcome to the Gospel Road. Yeah, I know it's been about a week, a couple weeks. It's just been kind of crazy. Iowa State Fair getting underway. All right, John 13. We'll uh, get into that and then we'll get back to what I was saying. But yeah, John 13, that's what we're looking at today. It says, Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. During supper, when the devil had already put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God, I was going back to God, rose from supper. He laid aside his outer garments and, taking a towel, tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into the basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and wipe them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? Jesus answered him, What? I am doing you what I am doing you do not understand, but afterward you you will understand. Peter said to him, You shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I do not wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, The one who has bathed does not need to wash except for his feet, but I, but is completely clean. And you were clean, but not every one of you. For he knew who was to betray him. That was why he said, not all of you were clean. When he had washed their feet and put on his outer garments and resumed his place, he said to them, do you understand what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you were right, for so I am. If I then, if I, if I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should also that you also should do just as I have done to you. Truly, truly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. I'm not speaking of all of you. I know whom I have chosen, but the scripture will be fulfilled. He who ate my bread has lifted his heel against me. I am telling you this now before it takes place, that when it does take place, you may believe that I am he. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever receives the one I send receives me, and whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. After saying these things, Jesus was troubled in his spirit and testified, truly, truly, I say to you, one of you will betray me. The disciples look at one another, uncertain of whom he spoke. One of his disciples, whom Jesus loved, was reclining at table at Jesus' side, so Simon Peter motioned to him to ask Jesus of whom he was speaking. So that disciple, leaning back against Jesus, said to him, Lord, who is it? And Jesus answered, It is he to whom I will give this morsel of bread when I have dipped it. So when he had dipped the morsel, he gave it to Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot. Then after he had taken the morsel, Satan entered into him. And Jesus said to him, What you are going to do? Do quickly. Now, one at the table knew why he said this to him. No, no one at the table knew why he said this to him. Some thought that because Judas had the money bag, Jesus was telling him to buy what we need for the feast or that he should give something to the poor. So after receiving the morsel of bread, he immediately went out and it was night. And when he gone out, Jesus said, now is the son of God, son of man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and glorify him at once. Little children, yet a little while I am with you. 
you see you will seek me and just as i said to the jews so now i also say to you where i am going you cannot come a new commandment i give to you that you love one another just as i have loved you you also are to love one another but this by this all people will know that you are my disciples if you love one another for if you have love for one another. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, where are you going? Jesus answered him, Where I am going, you cannot follow me now, but you will follow afterward. Peter said to him, Lord, why can I not follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Jesus answered, Will you lay down your life for me? Truly, truly, I say to you, the rooster will not crow till you have denied me three times. John 13. That is what we have looked at. Love one another as I have loved you. We don't see that a lot lately, do we? In fact, we live in a world where there's not, uh, not a servant's heart. It's mainly about us. It's mainly about me. Well, no, we're not serving one another. We're certainly not showing love to one another. It's really a all about me type of world that we are in now. Which is unfortunate. Because we need to be here for one another. And I know that cannot always be hard because, I mean, that cannot always be easy. It's hard just by watching what's going on. I was just mentioning that, you know, Iowa State Fair is kicking off. In fact, kicked off today, the Thursday, August 8th, for those that might be listening to this later. But parade was last night. And it was interesting when you kind of just sit back and watch people. There were a, a bunch of kids last night riding their bikes just right through the parade, which when I was a kid, I just, you wouldn't even have thought that to be done. Nobody was stopping them, and they were just kind of doing as they please. I was on, Honestly, I was waiting for one of them to get hit, which would not have been a good sight. But they were really kind of ruining it for people until they finally went away. But why do we do that? Why are we trying to be obstinate, obscene, annoying, pushy, rather than thinking of those that are around us, what we're doing to them, how we're acting towards them? I have a lot of people that keep reaching out to me and they're wanting to do things and my schedule has just been crazy between home and work and I mean I'm barely finding time just for me to recharge and I need to because I am certainly not an extrovert which everybody thinks that I am I'm not I'm an introvert I need that alone time to be able to recharge because when I'm around people it just drains me and I need to be able to get that power back and I haven't been able to do that a lot lately and then People ask if I want to do something and I end up either a lot of times I don't have time to do it. And, or if maybe it's, I've already gotten home and I'm like, yeah, I just, I'm, I I need to just take some downtime. And then they get mad at me. They get flustered, perturbed, start calling me names. Like, really? So it's about you not about me. It's about what you need, not about what I need. And again, that's where we need to find that balance in the middle so we're able to really lift up one another and help each other out. You know, like it says, to to love one another like Jesus loved us. You know, sometimes there's that bumper sticker that we see a lot that Jesus is our co-pilot. Well, maybe Jesus needs to be the driver and not your co-pilot, right? You need to... Let him guide you and lead you because you do not have this. I ain't got it. And you know what? You ain't got it either. And sometimes I was actually watching a video and it was a comedian. He was talking about that. And the funny thing is, is 
you know, growing up, you keep hearing about that, how we always keep telling ourselves that we can do it and we just don't lean on him like we should. And that bumper sticker kind of says it. Just be like, hey, Jesus, you're the co-pilot. You just sit back. I got this. We're good. Yeah, I don't. By any means. I know how you can reach out to people because I'm like, you know, I ain't got this. I need some help. What do I do? How do I do this? Can you help me out a little bit? Yeah, we've got to figure that out. You got to figure out that balance. And you need to be understanding. Again, we're not all the same. We do not all have the exact same personality. That was another conversation I was having earlier today at the gym when I was talking with someone of how each of us do things a little different. I remember learning how to uh, do taxes when I, I did that. And we would have instructors that this is how they did it. This is how they use the computer. And you need to use the computer the exact same way that they did. In fact, they like to always tab and use a mouse. For those that understand, you'll get what I mean. <laughs> In fact, if you would then even touch a mouse, they would come by and unplug the mouse because they were forcing you to do it the way that they did it because they felt that their way was the best and the quicker way to get it done. Not everybody works that way. I could use a mouse and I actually worked out pretty fast and quick for me. Again, we are different. We're different personalities. We process things differently. Now, there's certain things that, no, this is the way it needs to be done. You know, you're on a, on a production line. You are on an assembly line. Yes, there are, there's orders of how it needs to be done. You need to get it on there. You need to make sure that night is, that, that nut is tight. It's torqued. And, you know, it's not going to come apart when it's a, a finished product, right? So, yeah, certain things, this is the way it has to be. But even then, you've got to figure out the process of how you're able to do it to even do the job. It's, it can be a trained skill, a learned skill. In fact, that was even, uh, you know, one of my words of the day, if you follow those on social media about you know being better and kind of honing your skills you know being burnish honing honing that skill to be better understanding and learning how you can do that in a better way to be that better person to do things better of how you did it because it's not always the same and things are going to change I'm not against change but sometimes you don't need to change it just because you think it needs to yeah, you need to think it through. But, you know, how are we doing that? How are we treating each other? How are we being to one another? You know, it was even talking about there about washing the feet that, you know, a, a master is no better than the servant and a messenger is no better than the person who sent him. Right? We have to remember that. That no matter where we are, no matter where we fall in our category, in our life, in our lifestyle, in our prestige, our status, we're still the same. I say this all the time. We put our pants on one, one leg at a time, put that shirt on one arm at a time, right? Actually, the joke I always say is we all put the dress on one arm at a time. <laughs> oh, some of my friends look at me like I'm just nuts, which I probably am. I think I probably lost it many moons ago going back to when I was a kid. But again, how are we treating one another? How are we honoring one another? How are we respecting each other? Or are we? Are we completely disrespecting the world? I mean, this happened to me a few weeks ago when I was at the coffee shop and I was getting in my car. My car kind of, the door just kind of flung open a little bit. Well, not that hard, but it hit someone's mirror. I mean, it didn't, no damage, nothing was done. But this... The driver just completely had a conniption fit on me, went off on me because my car hit his mirror. Really? That is the worst thing that's going to happen to you today. And I guess it knocked it off tilt a little bit. He's like, you know, at least put it back. Well, I'm sorry. Didn't know it moved. Popped it right back and it's fine now. Don't need to be a jerk. Of a, someone who's talking to me and, you know, again, people can be pushy. They can be so much about them. 
And it doesn't matter what you say because you're never going to be right. You're never going to do it right. Your life is never as important as they are because you've got things going on, but they should be the most important person. Well, I'm sorry. Not all of us are that way. Not all of us work that way because we have priorities in our life. In fact, if you think about it, going even to the whole campaign that you've seen on YouTube called I Am Second, for those of us that are kind of a little more on a spiritual plane where God is always first, I'm always second. And of course, you can go even deeper that you've heard, you know, with Mother Teresa, everyone else is before you. I mean, the line goes on and on and on. But the thing is, we still have to be able to take care of ourselves before we can take care of someone else. Because if we're not taking care of ourselves physically, mentally, and spiritually, you know, we got to get the take care of those emotions, keep the emotions in check, take care of our bodies, take care of our mental stability. Because I know there's some days that I feel like I'm completely nuts. But we got to take care of that. Otherwise, we're not going to be able to be there to help anyone else. We are not going to be any good for anyone else. We got to remember that. We got to think about that, right? So many things, so little time, and yeah, dealing with a lot of people that are really kind of stuck in themselves. It is the world that we're in, and it's a world that we've always been in. This is nothing new. It's been around since the dawn of time, right? And I'm sure not going to go away anytime soon. I mean, for us, you know, in in America, it's an election year, which is, I'm not looking forward to it at all. It's already turning into uh, a, a circus, a three-ring circus, a dog and pony show, whatever you want to call it. People are not getting along with anyone. People are not respecting anyone. And I've been fed up with this for a long time and probably even puts me in the way my brain is of how I feel overwhelmed right now because there's just so being stimulated by all these things that are happening. Oh, can you te- can you hear it? Can you feel it? <laughs> oh man. All right, John 13. That's what we looked at today. How can it help you be better? How can it help you do better? for yourself, for those that are around you, to be the best person that you can be. And I can never say this enough. Sometimes being our best is just doing our best. Because we're not perfect. I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. None of us are perfect. But we're also not junk either. You know, remember this sticker? A little, not a sticker, but a pin when I was was younger that people would always wear back in the 80s. And this little pin that you would stick on your jacket and it's like, I'm okay, you're okay, God doesn't make junk. There's even key rings that had the same thing. I remember those too. We are okay. God doesn't make junk. But sometimes it's, it is okay to not be okay because we do get overwhelmed and we don't know what to do and we don't know how to deal with things. So we have that time that we've got to really just lean on God lean on friends because we don't know where we're going. We don't know what we're doing. Sometimes it is okay to be okay, not be okay. We deal with that. I mean, we've even heard songs about that lately. I think Jelly Roll has one, I think. What's it? Uh, we, are, uh, we Are Messengers has one. Yeah. But that's when you have to take that time to really focus and recharge and get yourself back on track and not let that define you because that's not who you are. It's not who I am. So you can get right back up and keep going. When someone's down, don't be kicking them. And again, be kind because you never know what a person is going through that day. And sometimes just holding a door for somebody and giving them a smile is going to change their entire day. John 13. Check that out. All right. If you enjoyed this, you can always share it on social media. Find me there pretty much anywhere under my buddy Jimmy. Uh, Give a rating, too, on whatever platform that you're listening. Always appreciate that. Find me at mybuddyjimmy.com as well. John 13. Read that. How does it help you be better and to do better? Thank you for listening to The Gospel Road. Have a great day. God bless. 
Spinal adjustments provided by Dr. Chad Rolfson. The Spinal Tuning Chiropractic Center is a Des Moines area low flat fee per month unlimited chiropractic care practice. When life happens, just adjust. Schedule today at SpinalTuning.com. The Jimmy Olsen Radio Network.